While the vast majority of teams in NASCAR have been around for years, some even decades, there's been plenty of teams that have burst onto the NASCAR scene, and plenty have left just as quickly. While this is something we've gotten used to in the world of NASCAR, perhaps no team has made as big of an impact in such a short amount of time as Bang Racing. While many team owners all fit the same bill of being in their mid-40s to late 60s, Bang Racing would be much different. Alex Meshkin was a 23-year-old entrepreneur who had become a multi-millionaire just five years after becoming a legal adult. Meshkin was a longtime fan of NASCAR and set out to build his own team once he had the funding and business skills. The team officially formed in September of 2003 when it was announced that they would enter the Craftsman Truck Series in 2004 with the manufacturer and drivers to be named later. The team would have an interesting business model giving their partners the most in-depth stats on digital sponsorship interaction of any team in racing. With the business model in place, Meshkin found strong partners. Larry McReynolds joined as a part owner and chief racing architect. Rick Wren and Eric Phillips were hired as crew chiefs. And, along with Daryl Waltrip, Bill Davis, and George Debedart, Meshkin would be one of four owners who would bring Toyota into NASCAR National Series racing. 2003 Truck Series champion Travis Quaffle was hired to drive the number 24. Mike Skinner would also come on board, signing a three-year contract behind the wheel of the number 42. Despite everything appearing to be going smoothly on the surface, Meshkin and Toyota didn't see eye to eye. Meshkin wanted to sign Regan Smith instead of Skinner, but Toyota wanted the veteran. Along with that, Toyota didn't sign with the team until December and didn't pay any money until January. Around this time, after being upset that the team couldn't pay the bills before they had even hit the track, Larry McReynolds would leave the team. This was a severe problem, considering Toyota would only sign with the team if McReynolds was involved. Eventually, the team convinced him to return. Bang Racing would quite literally start off the 2004 season with its namesake. Quaffle and Skinner would lead the first 10 laps at Daytona, and Quaffle would finish second. The following race at Atlanta, Skinner would lead 68 laps and would finish second after a last lap pass by Bobby Hamilton. Quaffle and Bang Racing would sit atop the standings two races into the team's existence. Despite the solid results on the racetrack, Bang Racing was like most teams, struggling to keep up with the ever-growing costs of competing. It was reported by Mark Ashenfelter that Meshkin was unaware of how much money Larry McReynolds and Rick Wren were spending. Wren had later said that Meshkin hadn't put a budget in place for them to work with. We could theoretically bicker about who was wrong in this situation, but in the end, it really doesn't matter. A team that's having good results is struggling. No matter what, nobody's going to take the blame, and everybody's going to blame somebody else. While the team wasn't turning a profit yet, Meshkin later stated in an interview with Kentucky.com, stating this definitely can become profitable. Is it profitable now? No but I think it will be. After the ninth race of the season at Milwaukee, Bang started to show the first signs of breaking down. While employees were getting paid, payments to vendors were falling behind. This would lead to Larry McReynolds becoming incredibly frustrated, and not wanting to be the guy who was known for not paying the bills, Larry would leave the team once more. He would sign a non-disclosure agreement so he wouldn't prevent sponsors from joining the team. However, he eventually spoke on his departure going on to say, quote, I'll just say that the business practice of Alex Meshkin wasn't right. I just couldn't and wouldn't fight it anymore. I worked 25 years to gain respect in this business. I wasn't about to let this kid throw that out the window in one year's time. There's been 50 owners who have come through this sport and haven't made it. Alex Meshkin is number 51. As July neared its end, Bang searched for something to help them end up in victory lane. Then, on July 31st at Michigan International Speedway, the Toyotas had tremendous speed. Skinner would lead 26 laps, and with 17 laps remaining, Quaffle would pass Skinner for the lead and would hold on to it until the checkered flag flew. In the making, the white flag flies for Travis Quaffle, last year's champion. No Toyota has ever won in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, and a Toyota gets spun around coming out of turn four. That's David Rudiman in the number 17. Rick, the race is over right now. They already took the white flag before the caution flag came out. They freeze the field. They have to hold their positions. Travis Quaffle has won this race. The caution flag has not come out. We have a spin in turn number four. That was David Rudiman. No caution has come out. This is the last lap. Travis Quaffle 
No cost in the Linex Toyota Tundra coming out of turn number four to claim another victory in his career. And the caution and checkered flag will fly, and it will be Travis Quapple, your winner at Michigan International Speedway. With the team ending July on a high note, more cracks in the foundation will begin to surface. In late August, Toyota pulled their support of the team due to the departure of McReynolds. Then, after Quaffle scored his second win of the season at New Hampshire, Mike Skinner, John Monsum, and the Toyota sponsorship moved to Bill Davis Racing. It appeared the writing was on the wall, and Bang Racing had went out with a whimper. But, Alex Meshkin wouldn't call it quits that easy. With Toyota departing, Meshkin threatened them with a lawsuit to avoid bringing legal teams into the matter, Toyota agreed to continue support of Quaffle's team through the remainder of 2004. With all that settled, Travis would continue as the lone entry for Bang Racing. At season's end, he would finish 8th in points with 2 wins, 6 top 5s, 10 top 10s, and an average finish of 14th. With it clear that Toyota wouldn't support the team in 2005, Meshkin looked to take the team to the Bush Series. While Travis Quaffle joined Team Penske in the Cup Series, he had also planned on running 20 races in the Bush Series with Bank if everything fell into place. However, when a potential sponsor fell through for Travis, Bang Racing would shut down in January of 2005. The months that followed would be very messy. Meshkin would file a lawsuit against McReynolds, with McReynolds filing a countersuit. James Coffin, the team's former vice president of administration and finance, would sue the team, along with Travis Quaffle doing the same. Toyota declined to say anything when asked, and Mike Skinner wouldn't say anything regarding the team either. However, according to his wife Angela, Mike got a settlement with the team, which prevents him from talking about his days with Bang Racing. Despite not being in NASCAR for upwards of 15 years, Meshkin hasn't held back when speaking on his days as a team owner, stating, quote, Even as a very competitive team, our business model was fundamentally flawed because generating a profit was nearly impossible. Simply put, the cost of running a NASCAR team far exceeds its sponsorship slash advertising revenue potential, and without significant business model changes by the France family, teams are doomed for failure. NASCAR must be the only sport where the most profitable teams are the biggest losers, and where finishing dead last or not even attempting to win makes more money than being a top competitor. Something is dreadfully wrong when the most competitive teams with great on-track performance cannot survive because the cost of running their teams far exceed their revenue potential. The problem is clear. Without teams receiving a larger share of the sport's multi-billion dollar television contracts, there will be no strategy that can make a viable long-term solution for the sport. That is the simple reality. In a nutshell, Bang Racing did everything that would be considered perfect when entering NASCAR. They signed good drivers, they had great people behind the scenes, and they had the on-track results to show for it. You can't expect more from a new team. However, there's more than one example of even the best teams having trouble keeping the doors open. Had everything went smoothly, I'd like to think that Bang Racing would still be in the sport today. It's a shame that the team came and went so quickly, despite having accomplished so much in such little time. Despite its closure, I can't help but wonder, what if the team's relationship with Toyota wasn't so rocky? What if McReynolds and Meshkin could have worked together through their woes? What if the sponsor for Quaffle didn't fall through? Maybe we wouldn't be left wondering what could have been. Thank you all for watching. I'm Jesse King, and I'll see you all around.